Recently, I went to LA. So I'm in LA for a couple of days. While I was there, I needed to create a few 3D scenes from scratch, and I was testing this laptop. So I'm actually going to the airport in a couple of hours, so I am on a really, really tight schedule. And the question is, can I do it? on a laptop. This is an older laptop that I have. Um, my wife got sent it for a YouTube video a while, a while back. It has a second monitor, which I currently have turned off to conserve battery, but you can draw on it. I might use Maya, I might use Blender, I'm not really sure, but I will be using NVIDIA Canvas to speed up the process because like I said, I'm on battery power and I don't have a lot of time. This video is sponsored by NVIDIA. Thank you to NVIDIA. So that's what we're doing. I'm currently at the Glendale Americana. This is right by where I used to live. And I really miss it here. I might have to move back to LA. Anyways, let's waste no time. I gotta get to work. I needed a few 3D scenes, but I didn't know what to make. So I started with reference. So I went to Santa Monica, which fun fact, I went on the same day that 17 million gallons of raw sewage was spilled into the ocean due to some kind of mechanical failure. That's disgusting. So I stayed far away from the water and got some reference photos. Now I'm a huge fan of mixing media, using visual effects to combine live action with animation. It lets you do some cool stuff, like take a photo, take a photo sphere for lighting, and mix the two for some fun results. I have some fun tutorials on the way, so make sure you're subscribed. But this reminded me of a forgotten workflow from my time at DreamWorks, something I learned that's super specific that I never really had the opportunity to try out until now. I learned this workflow from a modeler and pre artist where he would take concept art and literally in 15 minutes turn it into a full 3D scene. I could not find my notes from when I originally learned this, so I'm definitely missing a lot of pieces, but I remember enough to do a lot. So I'm gonna share with you today what I remember from that workflow. The first thing we're gonna need is some concept art, which is not my strong suit. Luckily we can grab NVIDIA Canvas for free, which we're going to be using and not just because NVIDIA Studio is sponsoring this video. Honestly, it's the fastest way to do something like this. And if we don't use NVIDIA Canvas, we're gonna be here all day. So open NVIDIA Canvas and whip up a few scene ideas. We could try to recreate the beach scene I shot, including replicating the lighting, but I've done a lot of beach images. So let's do something else. And I feel like we've gotten to know each other pretty well. I can be honest with you. I'm not very creative at this kind of stuff. Coming up with the concepts and ideas of like what to make is not something I'm good at at all. This is why having an iterative and layer based tool is super helpful, but I still wanted kind of a springboard to jump off of. So I Googled concept art. Now, if you do this at home, find the artist, make sure you give credit where it's due. Don't just say I came up with this. So I'm going to tell you up front, I didn't come up with the layout that I did here. I found this piece of concept art. And for the life of me, I could not figure out who made it. I did a reverse Google image search and I can't find the original source. It's just on all these like Pinterest boards and like wallpaper websites. So I have no idea where this image came from. So I stared at it for a cool minute and then I drew this like a two-year-old. And with the arcane powers of AI, somehow NVIDIA Canvas turned my doodles into this. So right now NVIDIA Canvas only has the square aspect ratio, I think, cause it's still in beta technically. I think they're gonna add more sizes in the future, which is really good. But for now, bring this over to Photoshop and let's extend it a bit. I used a combination of Photoshop tricks like clone stamping and other Photoshop stuff. And just going back to my AI art department to quickly grab some extra things like another mountain or rocks or gravel or something. I constructed a more cinematic arrangement of the landscape and did some drawovers to block out what I wanted ultimately in 3D. Just like when you're animating a shot, the idea here is to come up with some reference that you can use to quickly figure out what you want. And obviously using a tool like this just helps you figure out what you want quicker because you can try more things because it doesn't take that much skill to make something usable. And now we get to the fun part of actually using that. The essence of this previous workflow I'm about to show you is this. You take an image, bonus points if you can split it into transparent layers, and you use it in one of two ways. Option A, you throw up some basic geometry and use the split or multi-cut tool to slice a face into the shape you need. This will give you some horrendous topology that'll make any modeler wither and die. But we're not here to make them happy. We're not here to make the perfect model. This is about speed and iteration. So slice it up and add a bit of organicness to your planes. You can mess with the 3D position of the vertices for a bit of extra mileage too. Cutting things apart like this goes a little bit quicker if you can split your layers ahead of time, like I mentioned, but you can do it just as easily in your software of choice. I'm using Maya, you can use Blender, it really doesn't matter, you can do this anywhere. And give everything some spatial depth. The point is to actually make a rough environment, so place these objects around the scene. If you wanna mess with the lighting, you can go back to NVIDIA Canvas and switch the lighting preset, swap the image, and bam, new lighting conditions. You can also add your own 3D lighting on top of this, whatever you want. You can also duplicate some of the objects you've made to just add some more complexity or liven up the space. This is great for tree branches, bushes, anything that should feel a little bit more volume, vol voluminous, more volume. It's super janky, but it's really fast to get to this point and it's much faster working in this than having a bunch of four or 8K textures loaded into a real scene. You can always start here as a proxy and then add more advanced materials and geometry and stuff as you go. But now time for option B. This workflow is very 3D focused. You're gonna start off by just creating an image plane and putting that picture somewhere in your scene. 
start with the most basic of geometry and just rough it out with planes, cubes, nothing fancy, keep it really low res to work quickly. Another modeling trick I learned at DreamWorks. It's called whacking, like if something were wacky. I don't know why, but that's what it's called. You take a perfectly 3D looking, almost grid-like object and you whack it. You make it less perfect and more believable. This makes it feel more organic and natural, less like a computer generated it. So a plane becomes a path or a cube becomes a rock. I'm also using some extrudes and bevels to speed this process up. But when the base set is feeling decent, add those layers in. I could have used rocks from NVIDIA Canvas, stone walls, things like that. But I just went with drawing so you could see a little bit of contrast here and just see how they help me block out the rest of the geometry I want to add in. And to do this, again, I'm going for speed. That means booleans are allowed, plus a bunch of other modeling hacks I use on the daily that people normally tell you don't do. You need good geometry, triangles and quads, and right now I don't care. I'm not exporting this to anything right now. I'm just trying to make a scene as fast as I can to sell my ideas. I'm also planning on doing a video about some of my really weird modeling tips and tricks and things I use. Some are not nearly as janky. Some are actually really, really cool uses of other things in the software. It's all my different ways of modeling things as an animator. So if that sounds interesting, let me know in the comments. I decided to add a bit of ambient animation with this sci-fi object just by animating a cycle for this locator and then copying the data to all these floaty bits and then offsetting. I added this pulsing orb and made these energy rings which I animated with a deformer rather than anything more complicated than that. Then I made a flag stake, duplicated it for the rest and learned something very important. Simulations suck. <laughs> Normally I'm pretty decent at working at class simulations and stuff, but I don't know what the deal was. Maybe it's the, the scale of my scene. I have no idea. I could not get these flags working. So instead I created a basic plane, threw a sine wave through it, and made a tattered flag alpha mask in Photoshop that I plugged into the material. I had to do UVs a little bit, which I usually hate doing, but it was really easy. And voila, Fire Nation has attacked. You can't duplicate this geometry and have the animation come with it, so I used a proximity wrapper to have the old mesh vertices drive the position of the new mesh. Some fancy stuff, but it means that this cannot move from this spot. You can't move the geometry. So I stuck it in a lattice and I forced it into a new position because I do what I want. I don't let the software tell me what I can and can't do. And when you're ready, assign everything a material and set the color to a file, but don't click it like normal. Right click it, which I bet 99% of people watching have never done before, and you'll see a few extra options create an image texture as a projection, and then you can tweak the settings to be a perspective-based projection. There's some cool stuff in here, by the way. But right now we're just gonna use the perspective mode and set it to whatever camera we'd like to use. You should also lock this camera down so you don't move your texture around and make a different camera to work in from now on. Now you can start moving around your scene and you'll see that there's definitely some weirdness if you get away from the perspective. There's nothing that says you can't make a top-down version of your shot or just use some other cleaner images that you can generate. Right now, we're just going really rough. I projected the textures, added lights, made a separate rock material with a noise texture, threw in a character, a camera, and the most important thing of this entire process, two layers of birds to really sell it. Quality kind of looks like a PlayStation 2 game or something, but the point is that I'm not a modeler, a concept artist, or really creative enough to come up with a decent set normally by myself at all. And I'm also really slow to do this kind of stuff normally. By utilizing a workflow that prioritizes speed, and tools that help me iterate with minimal input, I'm able to be creative and more efficient with my time. This could help me build a set for a potential demo reel shot, a pitch for a game or a short film, previs for a large project, a mock-up of some freelance gig on site with clients sitting there with photos we've taken that we can generate through NVIDIA Canvas. You can make set extensions for something in VFX. The point of all of this, again, is speed. And again, this is for mocking things up. If you wanna like test the different lighting conditions, if you wanna draw a new object and then just shove it in there. You can just project all this stuff into the scene and when you want to take it to the next level you just add some real texture work or add some real modeling. You just do more at that point but up until here it's just about getting something in there. Just having the 3D scene reflect what's in your head. But one of the big takeaways here is how much time you can save by starting with a 2D image which for people like me that's where NVIDIA Canvas and the AI wizardry comes in so clutch. I can't really do this on my own. But I hope you enjoyed this workflow demo and that it gives you some fun ideas. A huge thank you to NVIDIA Studio for sponsoring this video and a huge thank you to you for watching it. Uh, my links are all down below. If you want to follow me on Twitter and Instagram and all those different places, TikTok. And link to my Patreon if you're so inclined and you want to support or if you want to join the Animation Studio Dailies where we do animation reviews and critiques and stuff twice a week over on Patreon. So links for all that stuff, including NVIDIA Canvas, down below. Anyways, thank you again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.